Welcome back. Graffiti is considered nothing more than a nuisance by some in our community, but Jessica Horn spoke to graffiti art tutor Nick Tam about the artistic side of tagging and how it's growing. Tagging is a word now almost synonymous with youth. We hear a lot of negative stories about tagging, but there are people doing positive things in our community with spray cans. There's a lot of what I'd call reactive measures taken in the city towards graffiti where they have things set up so that if, uh, you know, you can call up and if, if you see something's been tagged, you can call up and get it cleaned. Or, you know, there's places you can go to do stuff like that. And, and they, you know, like a kid gets caught tagging, he gets punished, he has to go out and, and clean tagging, which is probably just going to make him resentful in, in the long run. So the way I see it, like, you're better off getting them before they've started becoming a real problem and teaching them, you know, the artistic side of it. Nick is a tutor at one of the only graffiti art schools in the country and one of the main things he tries to instil in his students is pride. They can catch a few tags in a night. The next day, you know, some kid's just going to be like, oh, I saw all that, and they get a feeling of gratification from it. Whereas, you know, like I was young, and you know, I did that sort of stuff too. But we try to get them onto the point of instead of feeling gratification from their peers, feeling gratification from the community at large, you know, doing something doing something that actually benefits everybody instead of just like a small percentage of people. Nick is also part of the DTR crew, a group of guys creating amazing artworks on walls around the city. But despite the fact that this is his career, he still finds people are disapproving of his work. Like it depends where, where you are. You know, I tend to find like nicer neighbourhoods that don't get tagged as much have like this, this stigma to it and, and they, they just see it you know, and they, they can't tell the difference. Whereas if you go to like Limwood, Addington, Hornby and stuff like that, they're tagged so much, like their streets are so tagged that when, you know, someone comes along and does something good, they're really, really appreciative of it. But Nick believes the media are partly to blame when it comes to the hysteria that surrounds tagging. These kids that are just reading the paper, you know, the kid that they put in the paper, he's famous now, you know, he's got his, what, circulated, like he's done, what, does a couple of tags and now it's been circulated by the press however many thousands of times, which is exactly what, you know, that's exactly what tagging's about. It's about getting your name out as much as you can. So all they've done is done, all they do is, is do them a favour by getting them out there more. They encourage other kids who see that and go, shit, you know, they're like, well, I'm not going to get in the newspaper for, like, saving someone's life or being a doctor, you know, but maybe if I tag enough, I can get in the paper. Whereas if they, if they, if they were to portray what we do more then you know they would see more of that being what the kids are trying to do. The last topic in our look at youth culture focuses on dance. We met up with the Legionnaires dance crew last week as they prepared to head to nationals. This is the Legionnaires dance crew. They're one of Christchurch's best hip hop groups and today they fly up to Auckland for nationals. They are the perfect example of how hip hop dancing has taken off in our city. All of the boys, they all came to me, no dance dance background, they didn't know how to dance whatsoever. And, um, you know, now they're doing stuff that, that, that um, I, I struggle myself to do, you know, I'm getting old, getting, getting, getting a bit, bit on. But, um, yeah, just, just with these boys, you know, it's, some of them it's only taken like a year or even five months to um, get to, to a, an amazing level. And, you know, I'm not saying that, that they're the best, but um, I'm saying that, that, you know, these boys have got a massive talent. Isaac predicts the crew could make top eight at nationals, maybe even top three, which would be an impressive result in a form of dancing which is so noticeably expanding. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, maybe not so much in the, in the teaching market, because I teach, but um, it's, it's all sort of voluntary. But um, at the moment, yeah, there's... You can definitely notice it around, like, these heaps of little crews starting up, not just in Christchurch, but around New Zealand and the world. And while adult hip-hop classes are available, it's the youth of the world who are turning to this genre in droves. You just get to perform, and there's, like, a maybe a, a cool factor, like, when you get up there and, and, and you're doing your moves and it looks cool, and, you know, to, the, to some of the guys out there, you know, they sort of to sort of do it to impress some of the ladies or, and, and the ladies do it to impress some of the guys but you know, I don't know I don't know why young people like it but <laughs> Five to ten years ago it was incredibly uncool to be a male dancer now hip hop has made dance cool I think it is now like 
you're getting like um, like the New Zealand all guy dance crews like Desire, um, um, Sweet and Sour, who took out Worlds last year, and 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 they've really set the set the mark for guys to be dancers. Well, that's it from us. We hope you've enjoyed your Easter break. I'm Samuel Gibb, and that was today in Canterbury. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand On Air.